just missed Jamel Charlo. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we know his big brother, Jamal Charlo. Uh, any chance you guys talk to each other this week? I haven't, I haven't seen him at all. I thought I was going to run into him. I thought he was going to be here, too. So I'm, I'm sure we'll run into each other. You know, we'll, we'll make it a little spicy. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Do you feel the pressure with the homecoming fight this with me? Nah, man. I feel like uh, I've been fighting the bubble. Before my last fight, I had been in the bubble two fights. So when you go from no fighting with no crowd to fighting with the crowd, it's, it's a whole different experience. So I'm just really excited, you know, to be back in my hometown, especially to fight for another title. And it's another big opportunity for me. So I'm just ready to go. I'm excited. Do you have to win the fight or you have to knock him out? So when, with me, with every fight I go into, I want to I want to either get a knockout or a stoppage. And I've been I think I have five straight stoppages, you know, since I came back from my suspension. So uh, that's that's the plan. I go I want to go in there and I want to I want to give it. I don't want to leave any doubts in any any of the fighters or or not any of the fighters of any of the fans that I won the fight. So the stoppage is always the main thing I'm going for. Do you see this fight going past six rounds? I don't think so. Um, I feel like the style that David Lemieux has, you know, it's it's, it's basically tailor made for my style to go in there and stop him. But it's gonna, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be a hard fight, you know. David Lemieux, uh, I feel like he's really motivated too. For he's he's obviously fighting for another title too, just like I am. So um, he's a big puncher. I think with the big punches, the last thing to go is the power. So we're just, I'm 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 going in there and I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a fun fight. You know, since the Angulo fight. Like these guys have been increasingly just putting the handcuffs on them. They're not yeah. they're just shelling up and not trying to exchange. Do you think that's going to be the case with Lemieux? And is that been tough to get not the stoppage but that knockout? It's a little it's a little bit tough, but as a as a you know as a professional as a world class uh, as a, one of the best super middleweights in the world, you got to learn how to work around that. You know, if they put their hands up, you go down low. You know, when they put the hands that hands down low, you mix it up to the middle, you go to the top. So it's uh, it's. It's definitely just helping me in the long run. You know, it's like you, you got to learn how to, how to deal with adversity. You know, I don't want to be like Edgar Berlango where he says, you know, I didn't knock this guy out because he was running from me the whole fight. You're going to get people that run from you the whole fight. You know, it's, it's up to you to figure that out and try to knock them out, even though when they run from you. Are you looking to pursue the Lemieux fight the same way Golovkin did as far as the same game plan since he has so much power? Yeah, definitely. I feel like with Golovkin, he had his one of his, the things that made that fight you know, uh, made it go as his way for him was the jab. And for me, I don't really gotta go trying to do that because me, naturally, just the jab comes out for me. And that's my, that's my bread and butter right there. But, you know, I definitely have a lot of other things I could do, you know, different from Golovkin. You know, I'm not the same fighter as Golovkin, but, you know, I feel like I could, uh, you know, I could even put a, get a even more impressive stoppage than Golovkin, you know, because I have a lot of speed. I put my combinations together. So, so uh, yeah, I'm looking really forward to it. After the after the Lemieux fight, if you can't get Caleb or uh, Charlo next, is Demetrius Andre the fight you're looking to make since he's the only one that's putting the fight? Definitely, definitely. I think Demetrius Andrade is only the, the only other fighter that makes sense. Um, these other fighters I want to get is either Caleb Plant, Charlo, Demetrius Andrade. Even if we get get Edgar, Ber uh, Edgar Berlanga in there, and if not. Um, I think it might be time to go up to 175. You know, um, I've been trying to make all these fights happen for a long, long time. But I feel like right now, with, if I when I win the, the WBC interim title, I have a little bit more leverage. But if I can't make them happen, you know, it's because the fighters don't want to fight and take the fight with me. And you know, so I think it might be time to go up to 175. David, David, but, uh, fighting David Morrell Jr. Then. That would be a great fight too. So there's a lot of good fights on the table. So if we could get any of those fights, those would be. Fights I would love to get, you know, but uh, like I said, if I can't get any of those fights, then I might go up to 174. David, is there any truth? Is there any truth to uh, Samson uh, Samson saying that just to get into talks with Boo Boo, they need at least a seven million dollar? No, offer. it's not true at all. It's not true at all. I feel like if if I want to get the fights, I want to sacrifice a little bit less money to get the opportunity to get my name out there, then that's what's gonna happen. Everything comes comes to me and my dad first. You know, if, if we decline to fight. Because we're not, you know, it, it, it comes from us. You know, I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm not. If I don't get eight million dollars, I'm not gonna take that fight. I've never even made eight, eight million dollars, you know. And why would I decline a fight with Bubu Andrade? I feel like you have to look at the opportunity first, and whoever shines from there, then after the fight, you get eight million dollars. But I wouldn't decline that fight for no eight million dollars. And you know what? I also uh, got uh, uh, in touch with uh, Bubu's father. Also, if he's watching, shout out to him. You know, he's a great person. Uh, he told me that uh, this is the last fight. And uh, they're going to go, uh, they're going to be free agents. So we are working on that five, me and his father right now, and try to make it happen, you know. 
Uh, they they said that they're willing to make that fight, so uh, we're excited. Hopefully, that fight could come up next. Now, they, they, they were talking about the thing there with Paul Andre, and he pretty much like gives you and David Benavidez the same respect as far as like you know that's like a fight that they're you know entertaining, but of they course. just give you also much of smoke. Of course, you know nobody wants to fight Fugu Fugu Andrade. You know he's a slick fighter. Everybody says that he's a terrible fighter. He's not a terrible fighter. He's a dangerous fighter. That's why nobody wants to face him. We're willing to take that challenge. I think David can stop him. You know, uh, we have to work on closing the angles and uh, cut the ring off and uh, attacking that body, you know. Uh, he has to move around and find a way to beat David also. I think that's a great fight for both of them in order to go to the next level. Hey David, do you would you rather fight Andre uh, after you guys force Canelo to vacate the titles than fight in a unification or you don't care about it, you'd rather fight now, just unifying the interim title? I don't care. I feel like whatever fight comes first, you know, um, Right now, to be honest, I'm kind of like forgetting about a Canelo fight because he's over there on Daz and he's doing his thing. He's saying he's going to fight uh, Be Bold and Golovkin. And then I heard he might fight John Ryder. You know, so uh, <clears throat> like I said, I just I, I feel like I got to take this route and fight everybody over here. And then at the end of the day, that's going to give me more experience that I need. Because at the end of, at the, end of the day, Canelo, he has, he's where he's at because he has experience. You know, he's fought a lot of great fighters. So I feel like if I go the same route, Fight, um, fight all these great fighters, beat them. I will have enough experience to go in there and feel more comfortable with the fight with Canelo. Thank you. Two part question. One, how much does being a family man and a father changing as a person and a fighter? And you have to get that Canelo fight before he can, before his career is over. Is that guy you gonna chase him now before he hangs him up? You gonna see him? Yeah. Um. Regardless of I, I, I think I still have a long time to make that fight happen. Uh, I don't think he's retiring anytime soon. I think what is he like 32, 33, 30, 31, 31. 31. So I mean. I don't think he's even thinking about retirement, especially the way his career is going right now. So for me, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, you know, I'm getting more experience, I'm getting stronger. You know, I'm feeling even more comfortable in the ring now. So uh, if it happens now or in two, three years, you know, I'll, I'll be ready for whenever the opportunity comes. But as for me and, you know, being a family family man, having my family here, you know, this is this is just the best, you know. Um, gives me all the motivation I need in the world. You know, yesterday we were at the gym, I was with my wife, and I was with my son. and. He's right there throwing some punches and stuff, you know, so uh, it makes me happy. Um, I feel like when a, a boxer that's happy and is, has a motive, it's working for him and his family, I think he can't be stopped. Let me ask you, David, uh, you know, I know you brought up a lot of names uh, in this interview as far as the guys that you like to fight at 168. Uh, with the exception of Canelo out of the equation, who do you feel would possess the, uh, the most uh, challenge for you as far as... Uh, the fighters such as Charlo. To be honest, I have to be a hundred percent ready for all of them. They're all good. That's why this is a different level right now. You know, I have to be. I can't tell you who's going to be hard and who's going to be not because I haven't been in the ring with them. I mean, they're all pretty good. So you just have to be ready for all of them. And you can't go into a fight thinking that a this fighter, oh, he's not going to be, he's not going to hit hard, or he's not going to be fast, and I because sometimes you go in the fight thinking like that, you might get surprised. So. I'm just, I feel like everybody, I gotta be, everybody I go in the ring with, I gotta be 100% ready for. Do you think plan is, is that, that's, that's what I, I was gonna bring up right now, you know, the fight that we really won, that we really worked so hard for it, and it was, I did talk to uh, Luis de Cuba's, uh, uh, Caleb Clan's manager, uh, he says that I'm not David's manager, that I, I just, I'm just a trainer, I, I'm, I am David's manager, and I did, uh, uh, reach out to Luis de Cuba to make that fight with Caleb Plant. We were talking uh, Caleb Plant. I mean, uh, Luis tried to do the best to make that fight. It was, uh, uh, we were working on it and he declined. You know, he said that he wants to fight the best. He, he wants to fight uh, whoever, he wants to get up in the top right away. Uh, why not make that fight? It doesn't matter what happens with David. David's only 25 years old. Why not fight in September? Why not fight in December? Pick the date, whatever day you want, you know. Uh, stop uh, making all these excuses and let's make it happen. That's the fight we really want to do with Caleb Plant. So whatever happens, I, I know I'm pretty sure David's going to come victorious on May 21st. Let's make that hap uh, fight happen with Caleb Plant. December, September, whenever he wants to do it. Let's, you guys think 